Hello, people of YouTube. Hello, Silver Stackers. Hello, Coin Roll Hunters. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. This is Michael from Pennyhaven. And first, I just want to ask if you would please hit that subscribe button, then give it a like, then come back over here and hit that bell icon so you get notified when all of my new videos come out. Okay, so this is a video that I've been wanting to do ever since I started this channel. It's going to be the top five or so things that everyone should get whenever they are starting to collect coins. But it goes beyond that. There are some of these things that might be a little advanced for the beginner, but existing coin hunters might not have yet that I'm going to suggest is an absolute must if you're going to keep going forward with this. So, uh, and I will have uh, links to all of these things in the description, all of these items, and full disclosure, those links will be tied to my Amazon Associates account. Now, all that means is if you click the link and decide to buy it, Amazon will give me a small percentage of the sale. It's not going to cost you anything else, but they just show appreciation for driving uh, traffic to the link by giving uh, content creators like me a small percentage of the sale. And what that does is it goes directly back into my channel, helps me buy supplies and things like that, uh, helps me grow my channel. So I absolutely appreciate that. I want to say thank you in advance if you use these links. Now... Onto the list. Okay, so number five on the list. This is all going to fall under the umbrella of supplies. Uh, first thing I have are these tubes here. You can get them for any denomination coin. These specifically are for pennies. Check out the name of my channel. And you'll probably know why. And let's see. I like this one is just full of uh, wheat cents from the fifties. After I've been searching for a while, I'll have like a jar full of coins, and then I'll classify them down further. And you can also classify them by year. I've been saving a lot of coins from the 1960s recently, so these are all 69s. And then if I hear about an error that I hadn't known about before, I can go and search that specific year. I pulled out all like the 1968Ds the other day to look for an error. So there's those. And also, uh, pennies are dirty. Coins are dirty, so... Uh, I'll usually wear like a nitrile glove on my left hand just to keep it because I noticed that the, my index finger and my thumb on my left hand get super dirty whenever I'm doing that hunting. But if you're going to be handling uh, like some nice silver things with beautiful finishes on them, you can get white cotton gloves from any coin shop and I'll leave a, a link below as well for those. So there's that. And also there's a couple of things that I like to use personally, like a coin roll hunting mat. This is one I made. It's available for sale if you would like one. I've got another video called Coin Roll Hunting Supplies on the Cheap, I believe. So I've got this one. I've got this one. I've got another pattern. I can do any solid colors or I can find other patterns if you're interested. And along with that, um, I watched so many videos that were like top 10 key dates to look for, things like that. And I wrote a lot of errors down a lot of those down in a notebook and I was flipping from page to page so much that I made a master list. Here it is. This is the one that I work off of. These are the, the main errors that I look for whenever I'm hunting. And so I couple that with the, uh, the mat. And if you would like, I will send you a hard copy of this with the mat and I'll email you the digital copy as well. So, and also coin roll, I mean, uh, coin bags. I love these drawstring bags. I make these myself also available for sale if you'd like one. Uh, this fabric is like old cigar box labels, things like that. And I've got some felt ones that I've made as well. All that information is in that other video. I'll have links below. Okay, so that kind of uh, covers the supplies right off the bat. On to the next one. So number four on my list is the current Red Book. Uh, this is just a wealth of information. It's got information on coins uh, going back to colonial days. It's got U.S. minted Philippine currency. It's got uh, some information on some silver rounds, things like that. It does give you information on uh, some certain errors. It's got some pictures of errors in here. And what's very super helpful is it's got a rundown of what you need to look for in each, uh, each series of coin. Uh, a general guide of how to grade it. If you were to send it into PCGS to be professionally graded, this gives you an idea of what it would get. So it runs down the things that you need to look for on the coin, how clear certain aspects are, and it'll give you an idea. And one thing I do want to say is if you're, you go through this, 
it's a guide. It's not definitive. You can't say, hey, I looked in this book and this is how much you should be paying me for this. this these are retail prices. So this is not going to give you an indication of what you can expect to sell the coin to if you're selling it to a shop, something like that. But it is a great resource. And if you've been out there looking for something like this, you've probably seen the Cherry Picker's Guide. And that is the gold standard for coin roll hunting information uh, reference materials. But this, it's got so much it's got so much good information. It's great for a beginner. It's also absolutely usable for intermediate. So yeah, I highly suggest this. Go out and get yourself yourself one. It's so much more affordable than the Cherry Picker's Guide. All right, on to the next one. Okay, number three on the list is uh, coin folders. Now, these are the ones that I use. These are the Whitman blue folders, and these... I use these basically because the look of them, these just say coin collecting to me. When I was growing up, this is what I would see. And so you just pop the pennies in there. It'll have the years. It'll tell you the mintage. And you'll have uh, multiple slots for the different uh, different mints for that year. And the, one, the wonderful thing about these is you can see that they're, I have varying quality in the years in this book. This one goes from uh, 1941 to 1974. So whenever I'm, I'm hunting pennies, if I see something that is of an unusually high grade for you know, circulated pennies, I'll go to the book, I'll see the year. So, oh, I've already got something there. I'll put them down next to each other, take my magnifying glass, go from one to the other. And if the one that I've just found is better, pop that old one out, put the new one in. And before you know it, you've got a beautiful set. These are great for kids. It's a wonderful way to get them introduced to uh, coin collecting. So yeah, I absolutely suggest these. You can get the Whitmans if you want. That's what I'm gonna have links for. Uh, there, are, there are other types as well. So that's really up to you. This is more of an aesthetic thing to me just because in my childhood, this is what I knew. Okay, on to the next one. All right, number two on my list is all about magnification. So what I use for day-to-day -day, uh, coin roll hunting is this. This is a five times lighted magnifying glass and it's perfectly functional. Um, this is, you know, I, I'd use this, like I said, for day-to-day -day, and the light function is really clutch for me because I'll be looking at some coins, especially earlier coins, you know, teens, 20, 30s, wheat cents, and I can't quite be certain about the date, and then I'll pop that light on and it comes into sharp focus. So that's great. This is an absolutely, absolutely functional tool for day-to-day -day hunting. Um, but I can't be certain that I catch every error with that. So the next thing I would suggest is a 10 times magnification jeweler's loop. That's going to, you're gonna catch 95% of errors with that if you know what you're looking for and they're clear enough to be seen. So I would suggest getting that. And above that, this is something that I don't have, but I need to be getting soon, uh, is a USB digital microscope. I've got one in the description here. This is the one that I'm about to buy, and it's only 40 bucks, and it does a fantastic job. I know multiple people that use this. It comes with a stand mount and a, a, a grid to put your coin on, and you can display it on your screen. If you use the right software, you can do a screen in screen if you're going to be making channels for YouTube like me, where you can speak to the camera and you can also see that coin. So it's a wonderful thing, 40 bucks, that's a great deal for a, a USB digital microscope and they work wonderfully. That way you can show off the, uh, the errors on your screen, see it nice and big. So those are my uh, magnification picks. On to the next one. Okay, so the number one thing on my list, I'm gonna throw you for a little bit of a loop here. You're not gonna get this off of Amazon, and this is an intangible, and that is a good relationship with your local coin shop owner and your bank tellers. This is an absolute necessity. Uh, so I went around to all the different uh, coin shops here whenever I moved to this place, uh, to the city, and uh, you know, I found the ones that I like. I found one that gives the absolute best price for uh, for constitutional silver. It was like a dollar and a half lower than anyone else, and that's constant. So I go there if I'm going to buy constitutional silver, and then I started just going there to buy supplies, 
and all things like that. And there's another one that, you know, we'd been chatting a lot about things that I had in my collection, and he offered to just give me free appraisals on things. So I would bring stuff by, we'd chat about coins and currency, and he would let me know what I had. And it's not because he thinks he's going to buy at that moment, he's just doing me a courtesy. And he knows that in the future, if I do have things I want to sell, I'm likely to come to him. So that's why you need to establish a good relationship with coin shop owners. And if you have a kid that's getting into coin collecting, if they're a good coin shop, they're going to be very supportive of that. They love to see young people in the hobby. And the next thing is the bank tellers. Um, mention that you, you collect coins, you know, let them know. And it happened like the first time I went there, they asked me why I was buying that. And, you know, some tellers will be like, oh, that's interesting. And others will actually be interested. Uh, the, this last week, whenever I went to pick up a uh, box of pennies, uh, they said, hey, how was that last box? Did you find anything? I told them about a couple of finds, and the teller asked me if I collected silver, too. I have a whole video about it. It's called uh, How to Get Cheap Silver from Your Bank. It's a few videos back. Go ahead and check that out. And she gave me two 40% silver 1967 JFK half dollars. That's great. I didn't have to hunt a whole box of half dollars for that. They they see that these are odd and they set them aside and they know that I collect coins, so they offer them up to me. I paid a dollar for two 40% silver coins. That's wonderful. So it's great to have a relationship with them. Uh, some people, you know, I explained this all in my other video, but some people will buy them, you know, donuts or pizza or something like that. Just, you know, keep me in mind. I'm the nice guy. I've mostly done just, you know, being super friendly with them and, ch and chatting about the hobby. And I bought them like 10 bucks worth of candy a couple weeks ago, and that worked. So absolutely talk about your hobby with anyone, but specifically bank tellers, so they know that you're looking. Uh, some people will say, you know, drop your coins in you know, the coin counter at one bank, go to another bank to pick up your boxes. Yeah, there's lots of advice out there, but the main thing for me is be kind be courteous, start conversations. All right, thanks. Okay, so that's it. My top five list of everything that a new coin collector would need. And also, like I said, an intermediate coin collector. There may just be some things you hadn't thought of yet. So once again, all of these things are gonna have links in the description below. And also there's the video called Coin Roll Hunting Supplies on the Cheap. That's already on my channel a few videos back. Go and check that out if you have any interest in some of the, uh, in supporting me through purchasing some of the items that I make myself. Uh, the prices are all there, the information on how to get a hold of me. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was super informative. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. This is Michael from Pennyhaven. Have a great night.